Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. What we're going to be taking a look at today is some F2L practice. If you're new to F2L or you have been stuck on your progression on F2L, maybe you haven't been practicing deliberately enough. And I don't think you should really be worrying about your times too much if you're at a non-world class level or if you're not like pushing past 15 to 10 seconds you should be more fo uh, focused on like fundamental things so someone like myself someone who's between 15 and 20 seconds for all of their uh, solves i'm not really pushing the cutting edge of speed let's say but if you're a little bit better a little bit worse maybe this tip will help uh, I do a lot of untimed solves where I just plan things out and find new ways to do things. So what I have found that really helps is this. Hopefully this is good. That was an, uh, too long of an introduction for you. Hopefully I didn't lose your attention and you just left. <laughs> if you did, if you did, I guess you're going to miss out. So what I do here is I pick uh, two colors. Let's say we take this red green over here and this red green edge back here. I know where they need to go. I know they need to go uh, right here. So I would ask myself, okay, how could I pair them up in this case? Now, I don't want to tell you how to pair them up, but I come up with a way to pair them up and I go, okay, I got a way to practice this front right slot. But you, gener you, you generically don't want to fill up your front right slot on pair one. And if you were going to fill up your front right slot on pair one, it might be a good idea to rotate and get to take a look at that back left hand corner. So what I'm going to do here is I've practiced one thing. I've practiced how to insert that red green pair in the front left slot. I'm not going to do it. I already know how to do it. So if you already know how to do it and you can already do it quickly, why do that if you're practicing? I'm going to take the cube and rotate clockwise. And I'm going to ask myself the same question. I'm going to say, how would I pair up that red green with that red green and get it into that slot? Now, by doing this, it's making myself practice F2L twice as much for one solve. And that might say like, well, that doesn't really help you too much, but it does because it helps you say, okay, should I rotate even though I don't have to rotate because it'll give me more information to get my look ahead to be a little bit better and it makes me more versatile to say if I were to get this case in the future I'm getting twice the amount of practice and obviously I think you already know what I'm going to do next I still wouldn't do this I would rotate it again and I would say well now it, where is my red green my red green is over here and here now this is a really really good one to practice and it's one that a lot of people don't like to practice it's inserting into the back left if you can insert into the back left on your first pair with a single rotation and you're still averaging maybe like 20 30 seconds maybe even 15 seconds it's probably a good idea to practice these because that back left hand slot if your visual is the front right, that back left hand slot is not your friend. You want to get that filled up as quick as possible so you can see as much unsolved cube as you can. Once again, if you're if you're like sub 15, sub 10, I'm sure this video is not going to help you at all. But the majority of people are not at that level that are probably going to watch this video. So my point here is. I understand we all like to do the front right slot, but if you're not timing your solve, or even if you're just timing it for fun, why not take a moment to say, well, wait a minute, what if the cube looked like this? How would we go about inserting this? So let's go to the worst case, I guess. We'll go to the worst case. This is the back left slot. Um, and this is something you really need to start noticing if you haven't noticed it. And if you're still solving around uh, 20 seconds, maybe even 30 seconds, maybe it's something that you're not looking for yet. Notice I have an orange front and that red green piece is a red front. This means that this piece is oriented because I have a red or orange front. This means I should not need to rotate to insert this pair. 
So with that being said, how could we do this with nothing but R, U, and L moves? If you don't know, it's something to practice. Now, since this piece is oriented and this piece is also oriented, we could be a little lazy and just slide them on top of each other like this, U2. Then I just need to insert that piece into the back. I'm going to pull that left piece upward. I'm going to continue to move clockwise up here. I'm going to do an L2. I think it would be uh, more beneficial to do the L2 in certain directions. And then I'm going to insert this piece with a U prime L prime. My point is, if I was just mindlessly doing solves, I would have never got into practice inserting that piece into the back left-hand slot, the worst possible place you could insert it. Now, something that is staring at me right now is the red-blue. I'm going to take a look at that one next. Now, I'm not worried about how quick I can do it. Let's game plan it a little bit. Where does the red blue need to go? It needs to go right here in the back right-hand corner. For me, I put equal priority on the back left, I'm sorry, the front left and the back right. And this is something you need to do when you do these slow solves. You need to be able to say to yourself, is this edge oriented? Yes, we have a yellow I'm sorry, I'm colorblind. We have an orange front, and orange would mean if the red is on top or the orange is on top, we are oriented. So, since this is already oriented, we would be able to insert this into the back right with only using R, U, and L moves. No F moves at all. But once again, let's get more practice out of this. Let's say that this cube was clockwise a little bit. How would we insert this to the front right? Well, front right's the easiest one. That's the one everyone likes to do. But notice that this front right position has the back right position locked up. So we could ask ourselves two questions. How would we insert it if it was locked up? How would we insert it if this wasn't even here? The answers would be different. Why two? What if it looked like this? What if you had the blue white? Where is the blue white now? It is right here. Red, blue, white. What if it is like this in the front left position? Once again, it is oriented. Red front, red or orange on top. We don't need to rotate here. If you did rotate, it would imply you have to use an F move. And last but not least, you could look at the Y3, which would be another back left insert. Now, if you do this, you will be able to practice more F2L and you'll get more cases. And I think this is a very good one to just do. Uh, if I can fill up my back two slots or my left two slots, I always do so. Um, my goal here isn't to give you F2L algs, it's just a way to practice. So just to digress to this, uh, some tips. If you haven't started looking at edge orientation, there's no better time to start looking at edge orientation than now. It's very important. It tells you if you have to rotate or not. And it also says, hmm, you know what? Even though I don't have to rotate, would rotating this to a slot, such as the back left, the front left, or the back right, whichever one you hate the most, back left, uh, front left, or back right, um, how could I not insert this into the front right? If you take a look at these things, you're increasing the amount of F2L cases you run into per solve, and it just might get you off the bubble if you're still solving at 30, 25, 20 seconds, I don't think this would help you too much if you're solving at 15 seconds, though. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this uh, practice tip for slow solves helped you. If it did, let me know. If it didn't, I don't know. You can let me know what you'd like to see from me. Have a great day, guys.